In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to overview some of the changes in the title designer for owners of PowerDirector 20 and subscribers to PowerDirector 365. We'd like to show you a short example of some of the changes and then we'll show you a bit about how to use them. First thing I'm going to do is look at my titles. I have two on this example on the screen. We'll take the top one called Iced Tea and get into the title designer. One of the things we have that we're going to modify is the font face. Now we have several kinds of fill types. If we click on the down arrow, we're going to see our gradient color. But now you notice on the left side that the screen looks somewhat different than it did before. We have a fill-in for either each character, or each line, or the entire title. Now if your title consists only of one line, no matter what two of the bottom ones you have clicked, it will look the same. If you have multiple lines, these two will give you different options. Right now we only have single line titles. We're not going to go into detail about that one. The other thing you have is you have now three options for gradient style. You have the linear, and we have the slider we'll talk about in a moment. And then we have a radial gradient, and then we have the corner gradient. When I click on corner, we see something we've seen elsewhere in CyberLink PowerDirector. We see the four quadrants, and we can change the colors in any of them. If we look at the radial, we also see we have something different. That's going to be harder to use on text, but it's available if you want to modify it accordingly. You notice that in each case we have these gradient stops. Let's go back to the leftmost one, which is our normal gradient. And to add or remove a stop, there are several things that you can do. If I click on the stop, the second one, and hit a minus, it will disappear. So anything I want to remove, I can make minus. Now we always need a beginning and ending stop, and the default is what you see here, where we have black on the one side and white on the other. Now we can change by adding as many stops as we like, up to eight. In order to add a stop, all you need to do is click on the plus key, and that will add a stop. Now what it will do, it will calculate the value from black to all white and give you this value here in which there is no change. If I want to make the black thicker or the white thicker, I click on the color of the stop and then I can select the color from my color palette. Let me take a solid black here and click on OK. So now you see I've got more black on the bottom and less white. And we can take a stop and slide it to the left or to the right, and it will change the level at which we have that color. One of the things I'm going to do is use my color picker in this particular case to work with a gradient. I'll click on my left stop and choose the color picker, and it'll pop up another screen that I can use, and I can take a color. Let's take the lighter brown and the ice cubes here and then click on OK and now that's my first color now I I would like to make it so that I can take a color and simply duplicate it but I don't see how to do that yet so what I'm going to do is click on the second one and do the eyedropper again and we'll pick about the same spot and I'll click on OK so now I have more of the brown for the iced tea and I can change it if I want to. I'm going to click on the color here and I'm going to use the slider in my color selector to deepen it a little bit. Now I can actually see the RGB values so I can mimic them or the hexadecimal. I've got 120, 87, and 1. Let me make it a little darker yet. Well, let me leave it there. 
and now I can go to this one if I want it exactly the same and go to my color selector and I can type in the values and now I know they're identical so that's one way in which you can do it right now it would be nice if you could just copy from one to another but you can have up to eight different values so that's a nice way to put a gradient on the face of the lettering now I'm, I, I'd like just a little bit of the white at the top not a lot to give it kind of the look of the feel and feel of what we have on the left side so you can also change the gradient direction if you want to or the opacity if I turn this down we're going to see that we have the white on the bottom and the brownish on the top. Another way in which you can apply this effect is with the borders. And so I'm going to click on a border here. And my default is red in this case. It might be blue on your system. And let's take the border and make it a gradient. And I also have the same controls now for my border. It starts out with black and goes to white and I can reverse it if I want to. I can change the colors. Let's take a different color here. I'm going to click on this color picker and we're going to go into our image on the screen and let's take the yellow off of the lemon and click on OK. Now I have the yellow and the white and again I can't move the white, I can't slide it left, but I can add another value by, by either clicking here or using the plus. And let's, see, let's select the color, I'll take the pure white and click on OK. And now I can make the white come down about halfway and the yellow at the bottom. So that's a way in which you can use that particular tool. So you can use the gradient on the border, you can use it on the face of a letter, which is nice. Let me show you something else. We'll save this. Now we'll go to our other title. And I'd like to show you a little bit more about multiple borders. We have Afternoon Treat here. I'm going to double click on that. And before I go into this, I want to add something else. I want to add a backdrop. So I'm going to click on Backdrop and I'll say yes so I'm going to have a uniform color here and let's go for away from the default let's make the backdrop let's do a select from screen let's make it perhaps um, this color up at the top click on OK and I'm going to make it fully opaque and let's change the size I'm going to turn off aspect ratio we're going to change it, make it a little smaller, and then we'll change the XY offset right about there. Okay, now I have my backdrop. Now let's look a little bit at what we can do in terms of multiple borders. Now when we're looking at this text here, let's go to our border control and turn it on. And let's start out with a simple white border click on OK. One thing I like about the change here is now we can change the size of the border. Before you could have a value of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now when I click the up and down arrows, you notice it jumps by 1. But I do have decimals now. I'm surprised that we can't do decimals with the arrows, but you can drag a decimal. And now we can be a lot more precise in how thick the borders are. So let's set this at a 4. And then if I want an additional border beyond that, I can click the plus. That will give me a duplicate border control below. My default defaults to blue. So that gives me a second border. Again, I can change the border qualities. I can go uniform color. I can do a gradient, whatever I want. Let's make that a four, roughly. And I can add up to three borders. Let's try a third one click down again and instead of white let's go orange so it'll stand out and go click on OK and move up to a depth of four so now I have three borders on the same letters I don't know how often I'd use this tool but that's what it looks like now if you're going to have this many borders you're going to have to increase the spacing between the letters right now mine's set to four let's go to seven press enter 
and that where it looks a little better they don't overlap quite so much maybe even up to 11 because there's still a little bit that I don't want there and so that's how to space them out but when you look at this now we're going to be able to see that we have uh, three borders on each letter so if you want multiple borders that's a new feature I don't think it's going to be used widely but it's available if you want to so that's a bit about using the new gradient capabilities in PowerDirector's Title Designer and the multiple borders that are also available in the program.